Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, the Brooke Ashley. And today we are here to discuss The Real Housewives of Potomac, season five, episode 14. You guys, we are like six more episodes till the finale and I cannot wait because this season has been wearing me thin since episode one and I am tired. I personally do not want to see these ladies on my screen again until like 2022, okay? I think it's safe to say that this season has gotten on everybody's nerves and everybody is pretty much over it, right? We can all agree. This episode had me sort of like, oh my goodness, wake up. A little bored. Found myself kind of like, you know, sleeping, like, you know, kind of nodding off, like, oh wait, what happened? What? what? Where am I? This is still on? <laughs> we started off this episode kind of weird in my opinion. I felt like we had three different starts because we started off with Monique and her family passing out flyers for her tired podcast that nobody cares about. And then we saw this little snippet of Ashley. And then we see Wendy calling people to make sure that they have registered to vote and not to be the voting police. But if you have not done the early voting yet, please make sure you get out guys tomorrow on Tuesday, November 3rd and vote. Vote like your life depends on it because it actually does. And if the wrong person gets reelected, we might not never have an election again, y'all. So please make sure to go out and vote, okay? That's my 30 second PSA. So I thought it was kind of timely that they showed Wendy trying to get people to register to vote. Very clever, Bravo. Very clever during these very perilous times. But I digress because we're here to talk about Potomac and not about the election because that's another story for another day. But Lord willing, the right person wins and the wrong person is finally out of the office. <laughs> Again, I digress. So the next scene is Candace. And I felt like this was the true beginning of the episode. And we see Candace doing some vocal exercises with her best friend, Cliff. We all know Cliff, he was on last week's episode when they went out to dinner together. And Cliff is her best friend. They went to Howard University together, okay? The illustrious Howard, honey. And I know I have a lot of Howard graduates uh, as subscribers. Side note, I should've went to Howard, okay guys? Like, I went to an art school in Chicago. I know, boring. If you went to Howard, please drop it down in my comments. You guys are just like the coolest, okay? <laughs> We find out that Candace and Cliff were in the gospel choir together at Howard and um, they've always just had a really strong bond together. And Cliff asks her how she's doing and she just says that while this is one of the hardest times of her life, she is finding relief in her music. She's finding relief in singing and she's really happy that she is able to work with the big time producer, Chucky Thompson. So that's just been a really nice thing to take the edge off of all the nonsense that's been surrounding her. So then we cut to the next scene and it is Giselle. She's at a really beautiful tea room. She's waiting for Robin and Karen to get there. Robin arrives first. They exchange pleasantries, the usual. Of course, Giselle has to fill Robin in that she plans on being messy and bringing up the conversation that she had with Wendy about Karen. And it was so funny because Bravo is always going to show the clips of what happened prior. And you see Wendy saying, are you going to tell Karen what I said? And Giselle says, no. We all know that Giselle loves being messy and loves being a master manipulator and being the mistress of confusion because she really thrives and operates in a spirit and in a place of mess and strife. And she loves to have the girls fighting over stuff that she's created. But I digress, we're gonna get into that just a little bit later because we see it happen multiple times because of Giselle. That Wendy and uh, Karen fight, all Giselle's doing. So Karen finally arrives and she's already like, I'm already on guard because this is an outing with Giselle and Robin 
And when it's Giselle and Robin, there's always going to be some mess involved because the two of them just live off of mess and confusion. Well, it's really more so Giselle and Robin just follows along with it. That's really what it is. So Karen sits down, joins them, and immediately the conversation just gets shady. All those little nice, nasty digs. And of course, Giselle can't help herself. She's like, what's the name of your hat line again? It's called embezzled. Now, why are you going to say that when you know that girl is dealing with the IRS and all them damn tax issues? You know, good and well, her hat line is not called embezzled. It's called embellished. And Karen's just shaking her head like, Giselle just can't help herself being shady with her own best friend child. But you know, like I've said, Giselle is really a friend to nobody. She's just a friend to herself. But I digress. So Robin is a good sport. She laughs it off. And then she tells them that her hatline is doing well. And she wants to do a photo shoot and have all the ladies model her hats. So she's like, everybody's invited except for Monique. Giselle's like, oh, good. And Karen, of course, is very uncomfortable with that because you guys know that Karen just loves Monique, honey. She's just on Monique's side and Monique can really just do no wrong in her eyes. So of course, Karen being the great pivoter that she is, she pivots and changes the conversation and brings up Robin's tax issues. Karen did it in such a nice, nasty way. She was like, well, you know, I don't believe everything that I read, but are you all right? You know, what's going on? Do you really owe $90,000? So Robin is like, I can't really discuss it. And so Karen's like, oh, you can't really discuss your tax issues. Well, that sounds kind of familiar. So then they share a laugh and we see that, remember in season three when Karen and Ray had their tax issues, when Karen had that press conference with all the ladies, she said that she couldn't discuss it because she was under legal counsel, that she had to keep it quiet and couldn't say much. So Karen is like, well, isn't it funny how the chickens come home to roost? And Robin, it ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun because you were cackling and knee slapping and being real shady towards Karen and saying that, you know, Karen knew, Karen knew about Ray's tax issues and the liens. And now when you're in the hot seat, it ain't so fun anymore. You want to keep it quiet. You don't really want to talk about it. So I said, let that be a lesson. Don't be sitting up there cackling at somebody else's misfortune because you might be in the same boat yourself. Catch that. <laughs> so Giselle, being the messy bird that she is, she tells the story all wrong. She doesn't even say everything that Wendy said. All she says is, well, Wendy said that you want your money back from Ray. And of course, since Karen already doesn't like Wendy, and I'm gonna get on, I'm gonna get on that in a minute because Karen, I really thought that you showed your behind at the end of this episode, but we're gonna discuss that later on. So then Karen tells them that she called Wendy ignorant. And in my opinion, Karen looked really bad this episode. I thought that she came off as very defensive. And I really see what a lot of you guys were saying earlier on in this season, that the reason why Karen doesn't like Wendy is because of some jealousy involved. I'm really starting to think that Karen is low-key jealous of Wendy. Um because the way she was just super defensive this entire episode and like being so rude about Wendy, it really was very off-putting to me. I was just kind of like, wow, Karen, like you were kind of showing your behind a little bit, sis. Like Karen is just working my last good nerve, y'all. And she really worked it in this episode, but I digress. We're going to get into all that later on. But Karen just got super defensive in my opinion, just like talking about Wendy. And it was kind of unnecessary to me, you know, just the imitating Wendy and then defending why she called Wendy ignorant. I was like, okay, girl, whatever. Next scene, please. Then speaking of Wendy, we see Wendy in the next scene and she is like playing around with her kids and she's telling them how she used to play soccer herself. And then she says in her confessional that she gives her kids the freedom to be who they are and she hopes that she can do a better job because she says that being the child of immigrant parents, there was so much pressure to make her parents proud and she didn't really have the space to follow her dreams. It was all about education, education, education. 
she just wants to be a better parent and she just wants her kids to know they can do what they want to do and follow their dreams because she doesn't want them to end up like her, you know, feeling stifled and feeling like she didn't get to pursue her real dreams and she just wants to just do a better job. And that's very respectable and it's very commendable. And can I say, every scene that she has with her little baby is just adorable. That little girl is just such a doll baby, just too cute. So Wendy says that it really bothered her when Karen called her ignorant at her event last week because she's really worked her butt off. And she said she was pregnant while she was getting two of the degrees. And then she even said that her dad passed away while she was pursuing her doctorate degree. So she just said that she's been through a lot and she's really worked her butt off. And that's a big feat. And say what you want. I mean, do I feel like Wendy is always saying she has four degrees? Yes, I do. She does talk about it and she brings it up in conversation a lot on this show. But I have to give her her props. She really did the damn thing. And that's very impressive to have four degrees and we're going to talk about that later on because we see her and Karen go at it at the end of the episode. The next scene is Ashley and y'all know how I feel about Miss Ashley but I digress. We see Ashley and she is at her therapist's office Dr. Donna and she starts off by saying that she thinks that her and Michael made a little bit of progress since their last session with her. So Ashley says that they're unhappy in their marriage, despite her saying a few seconds ago that they, she feels that they made progress. She says that she's unhappy in the marriage. She feels like she doesn't feel sexy anymore. They're not compatible. They're not on the same page sexually or emotionally. Um, she's unhappy. She feels like he looks at her as a utility. And then she says something that was very telling. She says, well, when I first met Michael before Dean, before we were even married, I was so bubbly and I felt so sexy and I felt so free. And I was like, of course you felt all those things, dear, because you were doing what you had to do to secure the bag. <laughs> and you got it, it worked. Of course you're gonna show off your best self in order to collect the bag and to collect the ring, you know? You were doing all you had to do to make sure that you and your mama we're no longer sleeping under the bridge. Of course, girl. Of course. You really thought that this sham of a marriage that you and Michael have was really going to last the test of time and you were going to be happy? That's not how this works, sis. You were supposed to be the fun sex object who gave in to all of his whims and desires and put up with his cheating and put up with the group sex and threesomes. And you no longer want to do that. And he's unhappy and he's making your life hell. What did you expect? I digress. And then Dr. Donna suggests that maybe she go on a vacation. So then Ashley's like, yes, of course, you know what? That would be a good idea because I need to get back to myself again and I really wanna be a healthy mom. And we see that she does indeed talk about a vacation with the rest of the girls on at the end of the episode. But we'll talk about that later on. So the next scene, we see Candace and she is at Chucky Thompson's studio. And we see that Chucky Thompson wants to sign her to his record label. She's really excited. She's crying and just um, she can't believe it. She then reveals that she was actually in a girl group in high school and was this close to being signed but it, you know, it didn't happen because her parents had sent over the con. They had looked over her um, contract and they were just kind of like, oh, no, absolutely not. And so, you know, the group kind of disbanded and her dream of being in that girl group kind of fell to the wayside. So she just said that she was just really happy. It's like a dream come true. And they popped some champagne, honey. They popped some Ace of Spades. I said, Candace, you better turn lemons into lemonade. I know that's right. <laughs> so the next scene we see Monique Samuels and she is in her house. That bird gets on my last nerve. <laughs> Even when I was a fan of hers earlier on in the season, 
I thought that bird was just so annoying. I was like, really girl? Really? So we see Monique and she is in the house, I guess getting the kids ready for school. She's cooking up breakfast. She got the bird on her shoulder. <laughs> and she is just frantic and frazzled. And did y'all notice how Chris was not here for her? He just seemed so aggravated with her. He was just kind of like, yeah, like, okay, like, okay, girl, like, what's going on? Like, he was just not feeling it because she was like, well, did you do, you know, um, the Chris Jr.'s hair? Did you get her, the uh, Milani this? Did you do X, Y, and Z? Did you, you know, can you help me? And he's just kind of like looking at her like, well, if you don't like it, you can do it yourself. Like, he just was not feeling her. And I completely get it because he's seen his wife with no remorse after she done hit somebody upside the head. She's then talking about how with the charges filed against her she could be arrested and you know i just can't believe this because it took two people in this fight for the last time no it didn't monique you failed to take accountability you are 100 percent in the wrong the name of the game in housewives is shading roasting and a battle of words okay if you can't keep up with the verbal sparring you don't need to be on this show Period. You're wrong. The end. I don't know why we had to keep going around and around the mulberry bush. She sounded absolutely crazy saying that, well, it took two of us and I could be arrested. Well, surely you weren't thinking about your kids and your family and how you could have been arrested when you hit the girl upside her head. Like, it's just so crazy to me how people fail to take accountability. If you put your hands on somebody, you're going to go to jail. Period. And they can sue you and they have every right to sue you. If you weren't thinking about your kids, then why should Candace think about your kids? You clearly were not thinking about your family and the fact that you might not be there to raise your kids because you will be in jail when you hit that girl upside her head. Take accountability. Take responsibility for yourself, Monique. It's just absolute craziness to me that you just refuse you refuse to say, I'm wrong. I should not have hit that girl. You want to keep saying, well, you know, she started it or it's her mouth. No. The name of the game is you guys go at it and shade each other and argue. And that's what it is. You lost the argument and you couldn't take it and you had to resort to using your hands. I, I'm, I'm just so sick. I'm so sick of Monique. I really am. I, I just cannot wait to no longer see her on my TV. I, I, I cannot take it anymore. I really can't, y'all. I, I just can't. I was too through. I really could have thrown my remote at my TV when, I, when she said that. I really could have just fallen out. But y'all, I digress. Let's just mosey on over to the next scene, okay? <laughs> this scene was like... Girl, what is going on? Because we saw Giselle at her house and they're putting up the garage. I'm like, this has to be the longest home renovation I have ever seen. I said, this garage still isn't done yet. Ashley comes over and of course she has the baby with her. I said, if Ashley does not get her a full-time babysitter, then I know something. Ashley, you have too much money to be filming every single scene with your child. If Wendy and all the other ladies on this show are able to have newborns and they're able to have a sitter for their kids so they can film these scenes, then why can't you do it? This show is called The Real Housewives of Potomac, not The Real Babies of Potomac. I I'm sorry. like We don't come here to see you with your kid every single scene. So they sit down and they're just talking about life and Ashley's telling Giselle about her issues with Michael and she's talking about how they're working through their issues and um, Ashley asks her if she ever worries about Jamal stepping out on her again and Giselle's like, no, I'm confident in our relationship this go round. You know, we got together the first few months. I was worried, like, am I going to get a call? I'm like, girl, just give it some time because Jamal will be slipping up again. <laughs> Their whole relationship is just such a mess to me. And I, again, like I've said it a million times, I do not see any chemistry between her and Jamal. I really don't. That, that has to be for a storyline. 
So then they're, you know, talking and talking about all that. And Giselle is like, you know, Ashley, it's just so funny because when I first met you, you were just so free and now you're this mom and you're just so like buttoned up and you're just a different person. So then Ashley brings up how her therapist brought up how she should go on a vacation. So then Giselle is like, oh, a vacation like with you and Michael, just like just you. And Ash is like, no, like with my friends. So I would like all of you guys to join me on a vacation somewhere. Like I'll let you guys know the details later, but I would love for you guys to join me. And Giselle's like, yeah, sure. But I just have to ask, is Monique invited? And so Ashley's like, well, you know, Monique is my friend. I really want her to come. And Giselle's like, absolutely not. Like if, if Monique comes, then... I'm probably not going to be there and the rest of the girls are not going to be there. And you know that Ashley is just obsessed with Giselle. So if Giselle says she's not going, well then of course Monique can't come because Giselle is going to get top billing. So then she's like, okay, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to, you know, think about it and I'm going to get back to you. But yeah, I just want you guys to come on this vacation with me. So she's like, okay, you know, sounds good. So it's the day of Robin's big photo shoot for her hat line and all the ladies come trickling in one by one. Giselle arrives first and Giselle mentions that the model that Robin has looks just like Katie Ross. Y'all remember Katie child from season one and last season. Shout out to Katie Ross. I hope, I hope sis is doing well now, but I digress. Wendy comes in, then Karen comes in. And then um, Candace comes in and you could tell the vibe between Karen and Wendy's already off. You know, Karen hugs Candace, but doesn't hug Wendy. And Wendy's kind of annoyed, like, uh, cause you know, you know how they just have that friction, just a mess. Then Ashley comes in and Ashley comes in with a big box and they're all kind of like, oh, I wonder what Ashley has. And it was so funny cause when Ashley came in, she also made mention that the model that Robin had what looked just like Katie. And then they're all finished and Ashley gathers them around because she has an announcement to make. So she's telling the ladies that she spoke to her therapist and she's trying to, you know, find herself again and be more like herself and get back in touch with the old Ashley and she would like for all of them to go on a vacation with her. And they're all like, oh my gosh, yes, yes. So then she takes out this big flag and they're all looking like, well, where are we going? So Candace is like, are we going to China? And Karen is looking like, where are we going, girl? And everybody else is lost. So Wendy's like, wait, are we going to Portugal? And then Ashley's like, yes, yes, we are. So they're all like, how did you know that was the, um, the flag for Portugal? And she's like, I watch a lot of soccer because like the World Cup and they're all laughing. So everybody's cheering and they're all excited, like, yes. And so Ashley ends up just letting them know, like, it's all of us going except for Monique. And Candace is kind of like, woo, thank God. And I completely felt Candace because there's no way I would want to go on vacation with somebody who went upside my head and has no remorse for it. So then Wendy's like, okay, well, since we're all going on a vacation together, I just want to clear the air and just make sure that we are all on one accord and we're all okay. So let's just bring this up and get this out the way right now. She addresses Karen and Karen was just kind of like shady and her energy was just kind of messed up off rip. She was like, well, why am I not surprised that it's me? So Wendy says, Karen, I really didn't like the fact that you called me ignorant and how you were saying that like I wasn't a doctor and you were imitating me and just being really rude. And she says, I don't, I have four degrees and you know, you don't have Nan degree, Nan one degree. And Karen got so defensive and you could tell that Karen was a little bit hurt and a little bit shook. And then when Wendy was like, you know, I don't talk about my degrees. I don't brag. And everybody was kind of like, now girl, now Wendy, I am a newfound fan, but sis, you do bring up how you have four degrees every single episode. Okay. So let's not. And then when Bravo played the tapes back, they showed how you have said in every episode, I got four degrees. I got four degrees. Did you know I got four degrees? I got four degrees. I got four degrees. I got four degrees. I got four degrees. 
girl, you say you have four degrees like all the time, okay? So you, you do talk about it a lot. <laughs> so let's not tell that lie because you do do it. So then Karen gets really nasty, really defensive, and she's like, well, I may not have a degree, but I have a formidable marriage and I'm a businesswoman. And it's kind of like, but Karen, you just turned into a businesswoman because of this show. Because I doubt that you would have turned into a businesswoman had you not been on this show. This show has opened the door for opportunities because I doubt that anybody would be buying perfume from a random lady in Potomac had you not been on this show. I'm just saying, sis. So Wendy bested you in this argument, I have to say, because Karen really lost her composure to me. I do think that she is a little bit jealous of Wendy and the fact that Wendy is very highly educated. I think it kind of rubs her a certain way. I think that the grand dame is a little bit jealous and I think that she needs to own it. Um, I could be wrong, but a lot of you guys have said that you have felt that Karen is jealous of Wendy and I'm seeing it. And the way that she lost her cool with the argument, I was kind of like, Oh, Karen girl, like all this attitude, sis, like what's going on? <laughs> so they start getting loud and they're just going back and forth. And then all of a sudden, Wendy's like, yeah, and, I, and you were imitating me? And Karen starts imitating her in front of her face. She's like, well, no, I, I said that you were walking like this because you were slithering. You were slithering down the steps. <laughs> and they all started laughing and then they all started imitating Karen, imitating Wendy. So then they all start slithering out the door. So everybody just started laughing. And even Wendy had to laugh because it was funny. I just think that it's kind of sad that Wendy and Karen can't seem to get on one accord. And I am starting to believe that Karen has a little bit of jealousy towards Wendy because it doesn't make sense that she never saw for Wendy from jump. It's just a little bit strange to me because Karen has yet to say why she truly does not like Wendy. And I think it's a little bit suspect, but again, that's just my opinion. Who knows? So we end this episode and we see that it is two days later and Monique has filed charges now against Candace. And Candace is like pissed to say the least. She is cursing and carrying on. And I would be too, because I would be like, are you kidding me? So Candace is just hollering and she's yelling at Chris and she's like, do you see this? You know, this girl is a psycho. She went and filed charges against me. And then you see Candace getting worked up in her confessional. And she's like, this woman is so evil and so narcissistic and like so sociopathic that she would sit here and file charges against me when she's the one who started this entire fight. She hit me upside my head and now she's trying to fi like file charges against me. That's crazy. Like I've said, I will just be so happy when this season is over, y'all. I, I just can't take it. This fight has just been dominating the headlines before this season even started. I am just so tired. I'm at my wits end. Um, just give me the reunion at this point. But that's how we end the episode. You know, Candace is pissed and rightfully so because I would be pissed too. Guys, I say all that to say... You already know what to do. Like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you all later. And before you go, please get ready for Salt Lake City because she is coming next Wednesday. I want you all to get your furs ready because I will be reviewing and I'm very excited. If you haven't already, check out my recent video that I did. It was my interview with uh, Mary Cosby from Salt Lake City. Her uncle reached out to me and gave me the tea. So if you haven't checked that out, please check it out. Get yourself ready for SLC. A lot of drama, a lot of mess, some newfound foolishness that we have not seen before ever on a Real Housewives franchise. I want you guys to get ready. It's going to be a nice change of pace from Potomac. So yeah, y'all. Get, get ready because we're going to be talking about um, SLC as well. And I'm very excited. So... Y'all know what to do. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys later. Bye.